and yeah, it irritates me. I, you, we've gotten me rambling on politics here. Why are we having me ramble on politics? I need to make another marker, marker, <laughs> marker, kit, stop, propagandizing before you read capital on stream. Successfully added stream marker at 5142, kit, stop, propagandizing before you read capital on stream. Who wants me to read capital on stream? So kid, we'll tell you politics. <laughs> Uh, the, last, the last thing I'm going to say on this, probably not the last thing, is, oh my god, you need to look up Greta Thunberg's face when she sees Donald Trump in person. Like, I have never, like, she, she, she's got, she's got the autism, so like, she wears her emotion on her face the way, the way, you know, only an autistic kid can. Yeah. And I have never seen someone as enraged looking as she was when he walked through the through the metal detector at the UN. And and that was before her speech, and when she takes her speech, I'm pretty sure she just was like, yep, I'm pissed off, I'm gonna use that. <laughs> you should also look up her speech before the UN, because... Badass bitch. Badass bitch. None of those people who said they were gonna be coming back came back. Oh well. <laughs> Mm. Too late for them. <laughs> Maybe they did, but got scared by the politics. You know, they're missing out on the ass bitch. <laughs> well, he made a bad joke, so I put him in timeout. <laughs> By actually putting him in the in the, I, I put him in the channel we're supposed to be using. Yeah, okay. uh, there we go. <laughs> okay, okay. Yay! <clears throat> now I can kick you out of here just by remembering what permission I need to revoke. <laughs> I think I get rid of that one. Ha! Ah, it forcibly mutes him. There we go. It doesn't it forcibly mute me. It just makes me push the dog required. <laughs> it should it should mute you entirely. The second you did that, yeah, it, it put me on mute, but it then oh, a pop up said push the talk required. I need to review that because uh, people who are not players are supposed to be muted. In game time, so they can come. No, but I'm an active something. player. Yeah, but I turned off your active player status for the time. Mm. So that should have removed from you the ability to talk at all here. So you can only listen. I'll mm. figure that out later. For now, I'm gonna take a swig of RC. Open my notes. Do you want? Do y'all want to recap? Because we did, you know, that Saturday session. So anyone who's listening in at this point, because I've closed chat, I don't see anymore. Maybe. Uh, unaware of what happened and why we are now here hovering above Crater Lake. Um, so it's the first day of winter, or it was the first day of winter, where it started raining. So we had a rain festival. Uh, we did a lot of games. I killed an illusion. Antonio almost won a drinking contest. I wouldn't say almost. You live four out of, th out of seven days, I'm pretty sure that's an almost. <laughs> yeah, that's more like halfway there. That's like quarterfinals. Antonio almost passed a drinking contest. Yeah. Got a solid D+. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> and D plus is a passing grade, so... <laughs> no, I'm upset about my math grades, too. <laughs> High school. <laughs> Yeah, I, I may have gotten beaten if I brought home grades less than A's, so I don't actually know what counts as failing. No, it was, it was like... Math. I didn't turn in a lot of math homework on my senior year, so, like, I had, like, a D grade at best, and my teacher told me if I couldn't, like, turn in those papers, I was not graduating. And my parents would be very upset. And long story short, 
Antonio is now connecting to us from under a bridge. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, Antonio did the drinking contest. Uh, I did not get accepted to the the mayor's like private performance weekly thing, but then immediately the next day we're all gonna have 20 on a sing check. <laughs> yeah. In the presence of the mayor, who's like, why weren't you doing that yesterday? You. <laughs> and then, um, we got invited to a ball. Because everyone knows that Tony TM loves balls. Uh, <laughs> and we're, we're dressed up as a demon, a guy who's going to die. And, um,. Yeah, now we're at the ball. Yes. <laughs> and all the formal greetings are over. And... It is time... For... Well, everyone is beginning to warm up and get ready for the Song of Heaven and the dance competition. <laughs> Is there anything any of you'd like to do before it begins? I have a nervous pit in my stomach now. Uh... <laughs> mm. So, as things are ready, so as there's so after a little bit of awkward wheeling and dealing and dining and whining for a moment, as people are warming up, getting drinks of water, stretching, Lord Aslaxon stands up and says, "It is now time for the song of heaven. Demonic hordes of the demon scar, please stand to my right. Heroic founders of cauldron, to my left." And then, holding a finger to his lip until all are silent. Oh, I'll be right. Oh no! I was about to if read. I, I, I was about to read flavor text. If I wasn't so tired, I probably would have burst out laughing by now. <laughs> uh, I still don't have a good Lord of Slaxon voice. There we go, that helps a little bit. I have some stuff gunk in my throat. That's right, I did pull weeds yesterday and like an hour before game. Maybe that that's why I'm like feeling drowsy. You played a game yesterday? No, I pulled weeds yesterday. An hour before game. I pulled weeds. An hour before game. Uh, I have allergies. Yesterday. An what? hour before game. Okay. I'm, oh, I'm, no. I'm Yesterday you a moment. and an hour before game. Okay. Yesterday and an hour before game. Okay. That is the word that I missed. I was confused. I think I missed that word too. Uh, this must be where Hemingway got all his extra ands. He's plucking them from the future. Yeah, from Antonio. <sighs> yeah. yeah. I say I'm sue him, but he's been dead for like 40 or 50 years or something like that. In any case, to continue the spiel. <clears throat> As Laxon places a finger to his lips until all are quiet and continues... After losing his arm and legendary blade, Celestia slaying the horrific dragon Vitrus Bale. I've forgotten your name, your person's name. I invented him for this purpose. Maybe I should roll. Varanius, there we are. Varanius stood without a weapon to face the demonic general Nabthathun. 
and his approaching horde. The beautiful winged angel in the drama appeared then, heralded by a song of heaven, while he stood al stood alongside Sundarbar that morning in the jungle. She told him of her belief in his strength and wisdom, and granted him a weapon to combat the evil that threatened to overwhelm his forces. Alcast. Vandabar Aslaxen, that's who you are. Okay. Tonight we honor the drama with our own Song of Heaven, a competition to see who will be our angel this evening and reward Alcast to Paladin Aslaxen during the Demon Scar dance. I humbly invite last year's angel to the stage to defend her position, the beautiful Anna Taskerhill. And she walks up. People are applauding, she's bowing. That bitch. Contenders to the auspicious position, please step up to the stage. The evening's winner will receive the golden Alcast trophy. And he holds forth a beautiful three foot long golden rod. Well, you know, all the rich people <clears throat> gasp and applaud the obviously not as expensive as they would like, but certainly expensive for you trophy. Um, am I allowed to partake in this? You could try to. I would try. All right. So as you step forward, there's. Go <coughs> Excuse me. There's a bit of a gasp from some people as Avelskir next to you laughs and says, Ah, Paladin Eslaxon is going to claim his own weapon. And Lord Eslaxon says, Very well. You may choose one of five instruments. The lute, the harp, the flute, the mandolin, or the voice. Mm, I'll choose my own voice. Anna chooses the harp. You choose your voice. And a slaxon then says, Very well, Professor Palindor, head of musical arts at Cauldron Blue Crater Academy, please come in to judge. And the man who taught you both to dance comes in to judge. So the way this is going to work is there are, um, There, there's a, going to be a competition. There's six verses that become increasingly difficult, and the person who plays those six the best wins. Hmm. So, since you actually did this, I need to look up her thing, which is not there because I restatted her, so she is up here. If I had a brain, I'd have this open already. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Okay, so yeah, it's competition time. Mm -hmm. First verse, the song begins. Are we ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> 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 so the first verse both of you play you know passably uh, she's a little bit better than you you're maybe not so comfortable about this decision now we would go into the second of the six verses and again both people both of you pass She's continuing to play her harp very confidently, steadily, as you get into the swing of things and are getting better and better at your song as you go into the third verse of the six. Mm. And as you, get, as you get better, she gets better, and she starts just staring you down, playing. You're 
finding yourself having some difficulty keeping up, but you're keeping up as we go into the fourth verse. And your competitive spirit urges you forward and you do just a brilliant vocal manipulation and it throws her off and she almost loses track of the beat as we go into the fifth verse and things are getting quite difficult to perform now. You know, this is the battle coming and you you fumble a little bit, like you miss some pitches, you try to hit some notes that are a little too high, your voice cracks and she catches a little smirk of haha, I've got you. As we move into the final verse. Oh, by one. <laughs> and both of you bork it. What, both of bork it? Both of you bork the DC 30 perform check. Oops. As everything finishes off and she's panting and the crowd is applauding. You know, yeah, you both did fairly well. But, alas, Anna wins. And as she comes forward to collect her prize, she leans in and whispers to you, Turvu. Not good enough, little exile. As she leans in, Turvu will take a nice honorable bow and make a show of it. He said, you fought honorably, Anna. I was, I am uh, honored to have fought against you. Make a diplomacy check. Make a diplomacy check. <laughs> Do I get the, uh, the plus one bonus from formal etiquette? Yes. And you get a, you get one more DP added to that total I gave you last time. Nice, now we have three. And she, but she gets the very fancy gold staff. And the ability to play... Right, be, right before the dance. <clears throat> So, as she heads back to her position, Lordis Laxon walks to the middle of the room. As the demonic army moved towards Red Gorge, and Sundabar used his great elemental powers to defend his people, to the east, Paladinus Laxon sought to support his friend and the people of Red Gorge with his own folly. Alongside him was Kozumagon Lidu, a powerful necromancer. She had founded a settlement near what's now the foothills and called it Liduton. Kozumagon had built the village purposefully close to an ancient necropolis, hidden in a deep, dark lake. As Nabthorn led his howling forces against Red Gorge, Kozumagon drew upon her powers to raise an army of undead Kopru. But instead of helping the citizens of Red Gorge, the undead turned on Lidaton and Kazmogan herself. Tonight we, re we reveal our leader of Lidaton in memory of the tragedy of Kazmogan. We will announce our mayor of the haunted village. Find your dance partner, form the necromantic symbol of Lidaton, and let the dance of Kazmogan's folly begin. So, it was just the person across from us, right? That's our dance partner? You... Well, you get to try to pick your partner. Who do you want to partner up with? This is not the great dance. So this isn't the formal no. dance yet. This is a dance before dinner. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Who would make a good dance partner? People are get, beginning to pair up. Uh, I'll take a minute to watch. Three. Hmm. Two. Perhaps a uh, Lady Ophelia? You go to 
Lady Ophelia. <clears throat> Turvu, you're approached by Cora. Hmm. Which are the only pairs we really care about here. Because you're the only ones who can fuck anything up. Lady Ophelia of accepts Tonatium. As servants bring out a large map that have two magical circles covered in glowing symbols upon the floor. And Ophelia and Cora each lead you to one of those glowing circles. And the dance begins as some servants begin to play. As you whirl about, you hear the music growing faster, as though it's building, you know, to an end. You know, it's kind of got that all around the mulberry bush sort of acceleration to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, so would each of you kindly roll me a d100? Okay. Okay. Antonio, you pick up that this is a competition and that whoever is going to be standing in the center of this is going to be the winner. Do you wish to att And you are close enough as you hear the music crescendoing that you think you might be able to uh, get there. Hmm. You wish to try? Uh, perhaps. All right. I need you to make a perform dance roll. Okay, okay. Perform dance. It's a, a charisma three plus one from the dance lessons. Here goes the thing. Nice job. Whew. Excellent. Now, I l skipped a step here. Before this, I need each of you to make four perform checks, just to see who, how well you dance. Perform dance? Turvu? Kor is mm -hmm. trying to sabotage you. Please take a minus five penalty. A minus five? Yeah. G bus. Went out of a six for my dancing thing. <laughs> She's actively trying to sabotage you. Right. So, so I make four? Yep. Being sabotaged. <laughs> uh, so, so you, you, she, you know, you, you begin the dance with her, and like she slides her feet under yours, so you step on her feet and go, ow. And she goes, ow, clumsy oaf, and so on and so forth, until finally she manages to get you to trip over her, and the two of you tumble into another pair and get ushered off the floor before the music's done. And all the Stormblades are laughing at you, kind of whispering to other nobles, Look at this classless swine. Tonatium, I need you to make four dice rolls. If you make them, you're actually going to win. You just have to not get you and Ophelia knocked out of the dance. There's a lot of pressure. All right. One, two, three. Oh. So you are having a similar problem with Ophelia as you're dancing. Only, you know, she is deft enough not to get stepped on, but as she's going, she's going, you need to relax. It's not that difficult. You shouldn't be too terribly nervous, O oh, Demon King. <laughs> but... As she's trying to comfort you and console you, you're the couple that gets caught, tangled up in Turvu and Korra and ushered off the dance floor. So it was nice dancing with you. Thank you. You made me a bit more relaxed, even if it didn't work well. She says, oh, thank you. 
It was a pleasure to dance with someone so honorable. And you may make a diplomacy check if you like. Unfortunately, she oh, seems to be... Oh, wait, um... I messed up the <laughs> modifier. Well, we can adjust the modifier. What was it's the just mod? a one, so... Oh. Yeah. Well, so she appreciates your sentiment, but you can tell she's a little disappointed that she didn't get to finish the dance. Uh, if only I'd picked, not gotten picked, I could. <laughs> and... At the end of the day... The winner is... <laughs> Lord Volantru! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna cheer for him. I'm gonna cheer for him. He stands up, you know, his rotundity jiggling in the middle of the room, as he goes, oh, thank you, thank you. Good fortune is always my greatest asset. And everyone laughs. As Lord Slaxon bows and says, Wonderful. We hope you've enjoyed the ball thus far. But let's head downstairs where the banquet shall begin. And you are guided downstairs and through doors to either sides. To a... on either side of the room. You know, founders and demons kept separate. As you go down into the banquet room. This room, there's kind of two levels. It's, a, it's essentially, it's kind of like a high-class tavern that's normally private. The main tavern floor has been cleared of tables, and there is instead two half-moon shaped tables. One gold covered with angels and knights and wizards. The other red covered in demons and devils, but like tasteful, not horrible. And they're set to face each other with chairs along the sides, and you're led in to sit. And then, kind of off to the side, there's one more table where the Aslaxons, the Lord Mayor, Volantru, Alec, Embril, and Afsilk here go off to sit. So, these folk end up on a different table because they're too important to sit with you. And off I'll scare. Actually, we're down a couple demons now. Oh no! Yeah, missing one. Yep. But nonetheless, the tables are seated, and well, there's. Uh, a few more people who aren't from upstairs sitting down here who I didn't make tokens for because again Sunday happened there's Bowler Westkey who owns the Westkey's map emporium there's Dalem Bandershield who is the retired Aslaxon family bodyguard and head of estate and you have Jenith Talawar an old dwarf who is in charge of a new public organization called the Acquirers. And are there any of them that you'd like to sit next anyone you'd like to sit next to? As guess you I'll, take seats. Guess I'll talk to uh, Miss Dwarf Acquire. Forgot her name already. Uh. <laughs> His name is Geneth. Oh, Kenneth. Yes, he has a eye patch on his left eye and a monocle on his right. But uh, currently, you can't see him with that. You can see a young dwarf with a black half mask of a horrific horned skull. Hmm. And since you want to go sit next to him you actually don't have any issue whatsoever because he kind of wants to sit next to you so he's very happy to have you sitting next to him Tervu, is there mm. anyone in particular you'd like to try to sit next to? Um, 
I wouldn't mind sitting next to Lady Ophelia. Okay. So, you do... S so, would you kind of make a diplomacy check, Courtly Grace's style, to slide in there and sit down? Because more important that people than you are trying to sit next to Lady Ophelia. Unfortunately, as you try, you end up kind of seated one seat over. So the way you end up seated is like so. They just get seated between Todd and his parents. Yes. <laughs> like God, everyone's sitting down. Todd takes the seat next to Lady Ophelia, and his parents are about to sit next to him, and they see you, and they're like, "Oh, of course, you wish to be close to Lady Ophelia. Please sit here. Separate us from our embarrassment of a son." But politely, you know. Uh, Todd, who is, again, not wearing a noble costume like he's supposed to. He's wearing a corpse outfit because he's decided as the edgy incel that he is to come dressed as a dead founder. He's an incel. <laughs> Certainly gives off those vibes. We have uh, Todd the incel and we have Tony Tim the Volcel. And Turvo, who just fucked so much his dick fell off. Maybe. Hey. <laughs> now we know the GM secret. So, as these come, or as these, as, you know, dinner, they bring out the appetizers, the aperitifs, little bits of nibbling. Geneth actually really wants to talk to you, Tonatium. Mm. He's, he's talking about arts and furniture and tables and asking if you're interested in any of those sorts of things. Oh well, yeah, I'm particularly a big fan of tapestries myself. I used to do business at selling them all the time. Wonderful. And as he's, you know, he starts asking you about your tapestries, and I assume you tell him about them. You may, about you may what? make, you may make a diplomacy check if you like. Okay, this time I'll include the bonus. Just to, to move this massive document along here. So as you are having your conversation, he goes, "I'd love to discuss these sorts of things with you, with hands-on solutions." Say, five days from now, you come to the Acquirer's headquarters for a, few con for a little conversation? Oh, that would be delightful. Wonderful. And now i got to put that down somewhere. Uh, five days... Where was it again? The Acquirer's headquarters. Jenneth wants to see you. I like how everyone wants to talk to Tony <laughs> Everyone wants to talk to Donatium. And everyone wants to sabotage me, apparently. Yes. So, you're in between Todd and Lady Abaron, and they start having you communicate back and forth with one another. Like, Lady Abaron will turn to you and say, Isn't it just so inappropriate that my son wore that outfit today? To which Todd will go, well, I mean, you could tell my mother that they needed to be more specific, and so on and so forth. Do you, do you try to, you know, play a nice little intermediary between the two people very upset with one another that are off to your left and right at this table? Uh, yeah, I think so. Would you make a diplomacy check for me? You... You just managed to nail that to such an extent that, like, you can see that Todd and his mother are so, are impressed. And so is Ophelia. Like, everyone at your table is like, this tiefling is actually good at diffusing situations. <laughs> so, as a result, 
you each get so six more DP are going to be added from this little as everyone sits down moment. So now we're at nine. Yay! Hmm. But as everyone's ta- talking, Lord Slaxon holds up his glass and taps it with a spoon until everyone's quiet. He stands, smiles, and says, Lord Mayor, honored guests, ladies, gentlemen, I welcome you once more to this humble gathering. Once again, we celebrate the glorious Demon Scar battle and our heroic founder, Sundabar Spellmason. If only he could see today what his great work accomplished. And if only his bloodline survived to appreciate and enjoy the glory of the city he created. And as he is speaking, servants come through, setting before each of the guests a glass that has a bubbling red drink with white smoke pouring out of it. This year has proved especially difficult to our grand city. Last year we had last year we had a drought that threatened our crops throughout the rainy season. We've had kidnappings, <coughs> goblin attacks, and as some of you may have heard rumors, a vampire that lived below the city. Some Congratulations are in order to the Forgotten Exiles for their heroic solution there. On top of that, we had the kobold infestation and the potential drow invasion, which were held off by my son and his storm blades. And there's, you know, applause and such. These heroic adventurers have been our salvation. The storm blades are made of our own fellow nobles rising up to defend the citizens and fulfilling their noble obligations. Our other group has proved their value, valor as well rising from poorer beginnings than my son and his companions. And you can see as he's mentioning you, the Stormblades are all like, what? He wasn't going to mention them. These commoners have demonstrated noble spirit nonetheless. Rescuing the kidnapped orphans, slaying the vampire. Well done. Well done, Tervu, Fabra, and Tonatium. And everyone applauds him. And at this moment, he says, Ahem. Would we all please stand and toast? To Sundabar and the founding of Cauldron. He holds up the glass of the bubbling liquid. I'll hold up the glass. I will hold up the glass as well. Do you drink? Uh, I shall attempt to discreetly dispose of it. Make a sleight of hand check. (laughs) <laughs> it's the squirrel. Help me when I need you the most. Okay. So you surreptitiously take a sip and spit it into a napkin. Or something along those lines. Turbo, do you take a sip? Hmm. Can I make a perception check to see how if anyone else is taking sips? Yeah. Other people are taking sips as well. Tonatium, the drink was delicious. Like raspberry and licorice and dark chocolate. I'll take a sip then. It's delicious. Do you swallow? Hmm. 
We kind of want to to see what would happen. <laughs> okay. Everyone does their toast, and he says, "To the storm blades." And everyone raises their glasses again to take another drink. I mean, this stuff tastes good. Mm. Do you drink? Yeah. Was that no, a yeah. yes oomph or a no oomph? Uh, I didn't expect we'd have to take another drink. <laughs> uh, Kirk will take another drink. Okay. Don't you see him trying to slide of hand it again? Uh, yes, I think I will. And then he raises his glass one more time and to the Forgotten Exiles. Uh, this you can see, you know, up there, Lord Volantru downs his entire glass in your honor. Yeah. Okay. I must have scratched the back of my head in embarrassment. <laughs> so you do not drink that third time because you're just like, uh, okay, I don't know if I'm supposed to toast myself. Yeah. So around this time, servants bring in the first course, the demon scar dips. It's a platter of five dips, exotic fruit, and spiced breads. Ooh. Are you going to eat? Yeah. Eat some. Are you going to eat correctly? Uh, maybe. Give me a diplomacy check. Tonatium, are you going to eat? Mm. Maybe a little bit. Give me a diplomacy check. Yeah. So you both eat quite nicely, and it's very scrumptious. A little out of your wheelhouse, but that's, you know, fancy really rich people it. food. And you can see most people are eating delicately, too, as though they are expecting many courses. The exceptions being the Lord Mayor, who is not supposed to be there. <laughs> Hey, where'd he go? <laughs> He's supposed to be at the seat of honor in the middle. Everyone's all fucked up. <laughs> there we go. I could just imagine that they just got like they got fixed off screen and Tony and failed to notice. <laughs> off screen. <laughs> Fade to black. No one noticed. Yeah, they finish serving that up, and next they bring. Everyone a small bowl of soup. And as they do, a slaxon stands and says, A slaxon was known for his legendary swordsmanship and battle prowess. But he was outshined by Sundabar's arcane skills and boundless intellect. Every year we reward the greatest wit in attendance with a membership to Blue Crater Academy and their extensive library. The question this year is who will enter, answer the riddle of ruin before the sands of time? And he pulls out of a small, far too small bag, a large hourglass that he turns and sets down. Run out. So... There's a riddle, and I'm going to start a timer, and you have until then to figure it out. Wait, so, uh, the time... So, wait, what's the prize again? A membership to the Blue Crater Academy with access to their library. I was already a former student there, wasn't I? Yes, but you don't have a membership. Hmm. 
That that mm. didn't put things properly, so I'm gonna put it in the shackled city so it's properly formatted. There we are. Right. Uh, okay. 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 I read slowly. Beep. I'm going to Please read it listen. aloud. I'm going to read it aloud and then start the timer. Okay. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm mean, not evil. Wolb, I am called, twisted about. I'm a strange creature shaped for battle. When I bend and the battle sting snakes through my belly, I am primed to drive off the death stroke. When my lord and tormentor releases my limbs, I am long again, as laced with slaughter, I spit out the death blend I swallowed before. What whistles from my belly does not easily pass, and the man who seizes this sudden cup pays with his life for the long last drink. Unwound, I will not obey any man. Bound tight, I serve. Say what I am. A longbow. Yes! I haven't even Who started the timer! <laughs> I haven't even started the timer, and you're like, yes! Antonio just said it before. I thought you were. I was going to wait for the timer to start before he said it. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I don't know. That, I don't know. I guess like the image of a bow just came to mind, and like it just fits. I, I, mean, lo I love how I love how uncomfortably sexual the riddle is. I mean, the answer to the riddle is in the very first sentence. His name is Wobe. Who spelled backwards? That's bow. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. Uh, I just like got the analogy, but that's probably because like I don't know. <laughs> I'm not usually good at riddles. Uh, wobe, wobe means web. Just so you know, that's yeah. a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> wobe is a fr fancy word for a web. To be honest, I was like. I was like tempted to like actually shout out my answer like halfway through. <laughs> Does Donatium do that? No, he'll, he'll patiently wait till the end. So, <laughs> so he holds the the hourglass above him, ready to turn it. Donatium wait, patiently waits. The second he turns it and sets it down, Donatium shouts out "Longbow," and the entire room just stops and looks at Donatium. <laughs> I have. Uh, I have the answer too, Kit. No, it's fair. <laughs> Should we like roll initiative to see who shouts it first or something? No, that one person needs to make it. <laughs> so... But you, but you said it before the timer even happened. I was waiting. Well, <laughs> tough shit. You didn't. He sees the initiative. Damn the party it. gets three D, three DP. And scholars and a membership. To a library, yeah. and you, you and you get and you get your library card. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Though logically speaking, Tonatiuh would obviously have gotten it first because Trevor has an intelligence of ten. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and in fact, if you had not gotten it right away, um, after three minutes, I start making a check every three minutes to see if someone else gets it. After five minutes, I pause the timer and have you make a check to see if you can get a clue. And then, if ten minutes run up, someone gets it, or if I roll under the increasingly high perception percentage, one of the storm blades gets it. But yeah. But, uh, wow, well, I just decimated that riddle. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Good job. You're never allowed to. You're never ever ever allowed to say you're bad at riddles again. Okay. <laughs> that one. That one is an easy riddle in general. That's true. I, I I was going through it, going, how does anyone not have this right away? But I guess yeah. yeah in any uh, case, as far as riddles goes, that one was pretty easy. In any case, while this riddle was going on, they were getting ready to serve the soup. Unfortunately, you beat them to the punch, and now everyone kind of has to awkwardly sit there for a moment while they bring the soup around. <laughs> it smells really nice. It comes with a little hot bread. No spoon, just a piece of hot bread. And the soup. And you can smell spiced potatoes, coconuts, and herbs. Mm. Do you eat it? 
I'll take a bite. Cool. Uh, diplomacy check, as usual. See if you eat properly. Uh, I guess I better roll two. Then turn just to be like a pig. So, Tervu, you know that what you're supposed to do is very carefully and kind, calmly, with the knife to the side, cut a slit down the bread and use the bread as a spoon to sip up the soup. Okay, here's what I was thinking. Tony like, would... takes the saucer and very carefully and elegantly lifts it up and sips. And, you know, it's very formal. Nothing is spilled. It looks elegant. It's just wrong. I'm sorry. Were you going to do something else? Uh, I was getting to... I had a similar idea to, like, the right answer, but instead of using the knife, I just, like, broke off a piece of bread. Yeah. And, then, and then you break off the bread and you, like, sop up what's left. Yep. You know, you don't run into any penalties because you do it nicely, but, yeah, people are kind of like... As soon as you're finished, Pharaoh's like, this guy That's solved the riddle. <laughs> it's not that. It's like <laughs> it's not like that. It's more like, well, we can see he spent his time reading instead of learning etiquette. <laughs> yeah. But oh, as the dice are as about as cooperative as my stomach today. Well, are you ready for more food? Yeah. Because as you're finishing your soup. Your attention's drawn to the door as six servants haul out a massive table upon which is an oval silver platter with a great dome. And six of these people pull it in into the middle as they settle it down with a loud, you know, sort of smash and the platter shakes and rip it off, showing a fully intact roast dire boar. Ooh. And one of the servants begins to, and as one of the servants stands, he slips, exhausted, and knocks one of the corners of the table out from under. Four, three, two. Uh, try to bounce. bounce? Wait, which table? Okay, the table with the with dinner. You're gonna do something. I heard something you're gonna be doing. I need initiative from Tonatium. Turvu, are you doing something? I will try to do something. Okay, I need initiative from you too. Um, what is my initiative? Dang it. Well, Mal. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to try to dive for it and catch the table corner. Right. Would you make a dexterity check? Or acrobatics, rather. Acrobatics? Yeah. You probably have better that than dexterity. Nope. The exact same. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you leap over the table. You get there just barely in time. I need you to make a strength check minus two penalty. And you grab the end, but it's too heavy, and it's beginning to fall down, and you're losing your grip. Tonitium. Uh, I use my wand of uh, floating disc to balance it, to balance that edge to help turn a turbo. So you fire up, you lift it up, you get your your floating disc, and you slide it under the table. The other legs get burst off by your spell. And the entire thing just floats there in midair as everyone gasps. And you see Alec having the same sort of idea. You know, Alec Tercival, the paladin over here, having the same idea that Turvu was having as he leaps up and he just stops to see it floating there and goes, Very well. And he turns to Lordis Laxon and bows and says, May I do the honor? Lordis Laxon confusedly nods as Alec walks over 
and very carefully repositions the edges of the table legs underneath the underneath where the um, floating disc is and says Tunatium, you may release it. <sighs> I do, so. And the table settles in on those legs well positioned. And everyone applauds. It's a good idea. It's a really nice thing this spell lasts for the last five hours with the wand. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just kept it floating for the rest of the night. Yep. <laughs> oh. It takes a moment for everyone to collect themselves. Um, Alec actually lifts you up, Turvu, and says, Good work on your fast thinking. Oh, thanks. And, uh, goes to sit again. And once everyone's settled down, a slaxon goes, Oh, yes, um, legend speaks of a slaxon skewering a terrible demonic boar the night before the battle. The boar fed his army and filled them with fearless strength. Tonight, we continue this tradition with a boar of our own. And the servants quickly get their carving knives and cut their meat, cut the meat, and uh, new servants come to bring the meat to the table. At this moment, Turvu, I need you to make a fortitude save. <sighs> you... The world is spinning, and colors, you can taste the colors. Is the drink that close to <laughs> You have, <laughs> oh, and you failed bad, oh my, <laughs> you did all the drinks, <laughs> you have, a minus nine to every diplomacy uh, to every diplomacy and dance check that you have for the rest of the evening. That's horrible. Uh, as you're um see as, as yeah you're tripping you tripping. Uh, I look at this and I uh oh. What it looks like to you is that Turvu sits down, relaxes, and then starts chuckling and starts talking more freely with people next to him, like throwing his arm around Todd. Todd, uh, whose who's horrible costume now seems brilliant. Uh, can, I know they told us not to toast. I'm not sure if he, if he did drink it. Could I figure out what kind of effect he's under? Sure. This would be knowledge nature. Knowledge nature? Yep. Oh, okay. He's had some sort of hallucinogen, you're not quite sure what. But you think it might be the wine, especially since he's not the only person being affected like this. Oh, uh, is it Lord Volantre too? Lord Volantre was not apparently affected at all, but no. lots of other people took sips, and like. Felion <laughs> is sta turning to Cora, going, You think you're stronger than me? And Cora goes, yeah, I'm stronger than you, you pipsqueak. I could squash you with my thumb. To which Phelan goes, well, well, my strength isn't in my arm. My strength is in my soul. <laughs> and uh, yeah. as this is going and people are eating, the, their little argument begins to... Uh, draw more and more attention until they're standing shouting at one another I am stronger, no I am stronger <laughs> until finally the Lord Mayor says everyone's been served boar take it away, they can wrestle <laughs> Oh dear, I don't know how I'm going to fix this hallucinogenic. As these two come out, and they begin their wrestling, and Cora trounces Felion. She just grabs him, flips him, pins him. 
no contest, and he walks back in shame. <laughs> and as he does, she raises her arms, turns, and looks straight at you, Turvu. Do I have any other challengers? Or is everyone here a coward? Um, Turvu, stand up. I accept your challenge. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is going to be a series of opposed strength checks until somebody fails one of the increasing DCs, at which point the first person to fail gets flipped. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. There's no minus nine on this, it's just strength. Yeah. Let's go. Three, two, one, fire. Should I repeat me by one? <laughs> And immediately, you both grab one another and fall to the ground. <laughs> as you both fail. And you start to wrestle and try to get up once again. I don't know if I should break this up. <laughs> Three, two, one, let's go. I had a four. <laughs> and as you're wrestling about, she... Spins you around, pins you face down, kneels on your back and goes, ah, and bangs on her chest like a mad woman, frothing at the mouth. And you can see, like, everyone's got their hands in their head, like, what is this? <laughs> as she lets you up and you go back, or I assume you go back, what do you do? I'm not going to tell you what to um... do. Before she like lets me up, I want I want to assume that Turvey says something like, "Um, madam, I'm, I'm I think I'm supposed to be facing the other direction while we do this." <laughs> and like a joke. <laughs> Please make a diplomacy check with your minus <laughs> nine penalty. Because it is a plus one. <laughs> As Turvu makes an extremely inappropriate comment. <laughs> loudly in the middle of the room to the person that everyone low-key knows is the mayor's bastard daughter. Oh, no. <laughs> and people are like, oh! And she gets up and she starts laughing <laughs> as she walks back, shouting, I win! <laughs> Please lose one DP. That's fine. <laughs> oh my god. It's only from 12 to 11, it's not that bad. <laughs> uh, Where's the DP, right? Hey, right 11. <laughs> no, like, I was looking for it in my sheet. <laughs> I just... Oh, yay. Her who's on the LSD. <laughs> well... As that finishes, the mayor stands before us laxed and says, Next course, now! A little angry, apparently, at you, Tarvu. I should have prepared arcane lock so I can keep your yap set! <laughs> and everyone starts bringing along a uh, beautiful dessert pie. And the way it comes in, the dessert pies come along this way and are carried along to the end. So they go past everyone until they get to the singer who is served first. Then all of the demons, then the nobles, then the angels. Turvu, hmm? you may make a perception check, minus nine penalty. Minus died. I thought I was going for the diplomacy and dance. This one applies too, because it's being aware of the universe and you know you're hallucinating. So minus nine to my twelve will be a three. You see, as one of the pies comes around, that Todd very kind of subtly, almost as though it was an accident, knocks his cup over and goes, oh dear, oh no. And it seems like it only spilled on the table. But you catch, as he goes to clean it up, 
a little bit of white powder go down on one of the pies. Hmm. Hmm. Trying to think of what I could do about that. I'm not saying anything because I am not aware of this happening. No, you are not. <laughs> so it's on the crust of the pie. It kind of it kind of got spilled onto the pie. It looks like it fell in through the slits and is in the pie filling itself. Hmm. It's the sixth pie that came around. What else I have to tell the TM? Can I try to get Tonatiam's attention? How would you like to try to get Tonatiam's attention? Fortunately, it seems Tonatiam is looking across the table at you, very happy with your lo with your recent joke. He's making okay. eye contact and everything. <clears throat> He's got that look, you know, the I'm proud of you look that Tonatiam gets. You know, with the furrowed eyebrows and the straight mouth. Um, uh... Since he's already looking at me, I'm just going to point to Todd, point to the pie, and then do like a little thing across my throat. Please, uh, make a sleight of hand check. Because I assume you don't want everyone to see you do this. <laughs> Tonatium, Turvu is surreptitiously sending you a symbol that Todd has fucked with your pie. Hmm? You're pretty sure that Turvu thinks Todd has poisoned your pie. Yeah. How do I get rid of that? Well, while you think of that, Turvu, you may make another perception check. Another well, minus nine? Yep. Another uh, plus three. I don't, I don't know if this one. Yeah, fine. <laughs> So the pies come and everyone starts to eat. Do both of you eat? Hmm. Hmm. Kind of think. Trying to think how I could discreetly get rid of this. I don't know what's exactly wrong. Okay, go ahead and make a diplomacy check. Let's see. You you very subtly managed to run a oh I'm so sorry, I couldn't possibly eat another bite. The food has been so wonderful, thing. And everyone's like oh we understand, and they let the servants take your pie. Turvo, you're eating right? Um, I assume so. Make a fortitude save. Damn it, Todd. <laughs> it's a delicious little pie. Oh, uh, I didn't get poisoned by Todd. At one point well, that, while you're eating, you taste something a little bit bitter, but you figure it must be one of the fruits. Nothing's odd at all. Yay! You get one DP. One DP. We're back to 12. And as this comes through, Lord of Saxon stands. As you finish the pie, Lord of Saxon stands and says, Well, I hope you've been enjoying your evening. I'm pleased to introduce the final course. It's a celebration of the defeat of the Demon Scar army and the founding of Cauldron. The reason I announced this course myself, instead of giving the honor to our Lord Mayor, is that my beloved wife herself made it. And Lord Islaxon's noble wife, who normally is head to foot in the fanciest silk and finest jewels, comes walking out like, it's still nice clothing, it's not peasant's clothing, but it's work clothing. 
the scandal. And she's got flour on her. She's got icing on her. And she is wheeling out a giant cake in the shape of cauldron atop the volcano. Mm. And servants, the servants come walking out behind her. And she cuts the cake and it is served to everyone. And as they're getting served, both of you can hear everyone around you going, Oh no, last year the cake made us all violently ill. And they're all very nervous as everyone receives their cake and kind of turn to look at Turvu and Tonatiam, who weren't here last year, and see what happens to them. Turvu will try the cake. Tonatiam? <laughs> you know what, you might as well. It's quite good. This is a lovely cake. She turns and she smiles and goes, Oh, thank you, dear. And everyone looks at Tonatium like he's insane. But when Tonatium doesn't start to look ill after five minutes, people start eating. And you can see that she's very annoyed with everyone but Tonatium and Turvu. She's especially annoyed at her husband, who was also waiting before eating. <laughs> I mean, it's not a, it's not going to win any awards, but it's a per, certainly passable cake. It's a passable cake, which is good enough for me. Yeah, it doesn't have any more LSD in it. Yay! Yay! No more we'll LSD, go. no more laxatives. <laughs> was laxative in the pie? That's what you guys avoided, was laxatives. <laughs> yeah, you didn't need it. I made the safe, so I didn't have, I didn't have the runs. Yeah. Oh no! If you, didn't, I, you didn't have the runs during the important dance, which I still have a minus nine to, so my dance check is two. Well, <laughs> as you all finish, the servants come and take away the tables. Now, I forgot to mention earlier, there's a balcony here. Commoners are eating up on the balcony, watching all of you through all of this. So, like, Turvu's inappropriate comment? That's going to be in the newspaper. <laughs> uh -oh. Tonatiam's wonderful compliment? Probably going to make the newspaper. But as everyone is finished up, the clash of armies is about ready to begin, and everyone resumes their places. Does this mean they got to change into the big costume? Yes. Oh, Alex over here now? No. I can't remember where Umbra was. Uh, all I know is I was standing out, uh, directly in front of Alec. Well, not anymore. Now I'm standing in front of Celeste. Yeah. Well, you have a special role. So, as everyone starts getting ready, Lady is Slaxon, who, if you remember last time, told you to meet her in the front hall after dinner. Is kind of beckoning you to hurry into the foyer. Hmm. Oh, hi, uh, that's right. I need to change my costume. Yep. As I say, as I excuse myself. So you go to the foyer? Trevor, do you go yep. to the foyer? Yeah. All right. As you head into the to foyer, you see Lady Slaxon with four servants and Tonatium's costume. Two servants have it. Two more just come right over to Tonatiam and start disrobing him. Right there. Oh my. And she says, excellent, wonderful. So the way this works, just so you all remember, they're going to begin their dance in there. And Zachary and everyone is going to be involved in that. Then... Tonatiam, our Nabathoru, I got your name right, yes, Tonatiam? Yes. Our Nabathoru will enter and will do the dance motions, disrupting the heroes, 
chasing them away. Then our Lord Aslaxon follows in and stabs our Nabathoru from behind. Our Nabathoru strikes him down. And then our Sundabar raises up his sword, enchants it with magic, and slays Nabathoru. Keep your dance ready, and everything shall go wonderfully. Everyone's drunk by this point, anyway. Uh, speaking of drunk, uh, I think Turbo had a bit too much of a toast. Is there anything to get him focused again? She looks to you, Turbo, and she just smacks you on the cheek and says, You'll be fine. <laughs> Does that give me another LSD? Nope. <laughs> so damn it. Not a magical flaps. <laughs> Bum, 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 ba da 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 So, Alma is not here. Everyone here is matched up. Lady Embril walks away because she's too important to be forced into it. And the battle dance begins. Pra cha cha cha. And after a few moments. She says, now, to you, Tonatium. Ah, I say as I enter the field, swaying and swinging to disrupt. I need you to make an initiative roll. This dance is a battle. Like, so, uh, can we go over what I'm supposed to do again? You're supposed to disrupt things. And let's just say there's some disruption of its own going on here. So we got... So as you come in, doing your roar and continuing your dance. Todd Vanderboren gets in your way. Would you make a, a dexterity check? Dexterity? Yep. Uh, will this be with the dance bonus? No, this is just dexterity. Your dance will be on your turn. And as he dances by you, in, his, in the battle dance, it's very obvious that he's trying to step on your feet, but you slid them out of the way. As you dance your way through, through Anna, not Anna, Cora connects her arm with yours in the battle dance, attempting to spin you. This is a dance check, actually. Okay, so... But as you do the spin, you catch her and you spin her around and you send her tumbling into several others. Chaos reigns on the floor as you march through and Anna raises her voice alongside her heart into the song, an eerie, echoing, repetitive song, not quite what you auditioned for before. Would you make a will save, Tonatium? A will save? Yes. Uh, crap, 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 crap. Where is, where is, uh, is this a fear of death and sanity or confusion effect? No. Okay, so... And for a moment, you feel your eyes attracted solely to her as you begin to sway unconsciously with the music as you realize what's happening and break free. You're not going to be enthralled by any bard's spell. So the TM. Only two is allowed to do that. Hi. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Who should I go for next, then? All you need to do now is make that dance check. Oh, that dance check. Okay. That could have gone better. 
Boom. So you were last with Korra, who is going to make her check here. She rolled less. So as you go through this, you actually end up knocking Korra out of the dance. As you go through. Oof. And Zachary, very carefully dancing with his opponent, attempts to knock them into you. Would you please make a dexterity check? Okay, just... And you deftly catch the person he knocks into you and roll them back and they are forced from the dance as people begin falling like flies. Mostly heroes. Turvu. Yep. Are you gonna go in now? Uh, I assume so. Alright. What do you wish to do? How do you want to make this work? How are you gonna play this out? So I'm supposed to walk behind him and stab Tonatian. You're supposed to dance behind him. You're supposed to dance behind Tonatian and stab him. Yeah. Um, I will attempt to do just that. Give us your dance. <laughs> you can do it. You dance. You dance in behind, and you slide your not your fake sword in between the arms. As things come through, and Todd Vanderboren, playing the founder's role, does a dance, but it's dirty. It's clear in this dance he's trying to kick your legs out from under you, Tonatium. Uh, Would you make a, a, a reflex save? Oh, reflex. Okay. <laughs> or dance. Your choice. Oh, uh, it's the same anyway. You you de you take that kick and you spin him around. Cora's out of this. Emma. Emma can no longer do that. She just grumbles, and as she sings, she places extra emphasis in the verse upon, and at, and the battle's feet twisted, and the battle's feet fall. I need you to make a reflex save, Tonatium. Uh -oh. As you stumble, as her bardic magic kind of, as her bardic mage hand kind of pulls one of your feet through your dance, you're going to take a minus two penalty on your next dance roll, which is against Turvu. Hey. Uh, let's see. Turn Mal, you may take a penalty on this because you want to lose it. But you don't want to lose it badly. Um, so you want Tonatium to roll better than you, but you don't want to roll below a 10. As opposed to dance I rolls. Will... Okay, I'll take a penalty. Okay. How much do you want to take? I'll take a minus 3. So okay. I'll go from, from plus 2 to minus 1. Let's have that opposed dance roll. Okay. Hey, I'm a gem. <laughs> and you know better than me. And manages to s dance around, and Turvu manages to dance his way through in a dramatic failure, dropping the sword prop upon the ground. And as his last stands and comes to dance, he grumbling attempts to throw you off balance as he does so. So I'll need you to make another opposed dance roll, Tonatium. Uh, am I supposed to lose this then? You... He rolls a one. Oh, so no. as he comes out, <laughs> He's so he swings up to you, and you find yourself catching his sword. Just Your reflexes take over, you come up to block his sword, and in that moment, in that instant, you go, wait, he's supposed to kill me. And you deftly shatter yourself as though the magic in the sword burned you and dance off to the side. <laughs> and it's obvious to everyone in the room that Tonatium just, like, embarrassed 
Prince Zachary S. Lakes in the second. Would you kindly get 8 DP? 8 DP? We're at 20 yes. now. Wow. I didn't, I didn't expect that. Okay. So, as everything finishes and everyone is applauding and cheering and bowing, they go once more into the final dance. Tonitium, you are permitted to doff your costume and come out there just in your normal clothes for this dance. I will do so. Excellent. So this is going to be five dance checks. <sighs> uh, for me? For, for you and Turvu. Make as many as you can. He's getting right, progressively uh, harder. Like so first one. Well, you jumped the gun and you succeeded on one. <laughs> of the increasingly harder dance checks. I'm really sad that I didn't. Uh, d I drank that stuff now. Making making everyone kind of visibly disappointed in your performance at the end. But then, uh, let's try this again. And Tonatium you know, you don't remove your costume as you go dancing and you just make a fool of yourself. I'll laugh it off. <laughs> I, I use a diplomacy check to laugh it off. Go ahead. Sure. Make a diplomacy check. You gain one DP. It's 21 DP now. I guess you can't use that costume as long as I thought after all. <laughs> so, at this moment, as everyone applauds and finishes off, the Lord Mayor stands. <clears throat> Tonight has been a celebration of our heritage and our city as much as a celebration of our founders. During the time of adver this time of adversity, we are privy to great acts and valor. To these ends, I have special awards to issue. Would the Stormblades come to the mayor, to up to me, for their defeat of the demonic kobolds and the retreat of their drow masters, I, re I grant each of the Stormblades a star of valor, and pins a medal on each of their chests, shaking their hands. And it's a Good thing, Tonatian, that you made that diplomacy check. Because you need 21 DP to get any rewards from this. <laughs> As he turns and says, <clears throat> Furthermore, I would like to invite up the Forgotten Exiles. for their rescue of the orphans and banishing of the vampire from beneath the city. I grant them also stars of valor. And he goes over to each of you in turn and pins a star of valor to your chest. Jeez. Such an honor to see the reward. Keep and up an the good work. this wonderful city. So the star of valor is a non-magical item but it's uh, kind of like getting a Medal of Honor sort of thing. If you're wearing a Star of Valor, you get a plus three to diplomacy checks made to citizens of noble birth in Cauldron. Guess I'll put that in my equipment. And with that, the official formalities are over. And there is just the rest of the evening. Calm, quiet dancing. Servants start coming along with plates of hors d'oeuvres. As much bubbling cauldron, that hallucinogenic drink, as you'd like to have. Yeah, I'll pass. What yeah, would you like to do for the rest of the evening? 
Hmm? <coughs> Sorry? What do you say? What would you like to do for the rest of the evening? Uh, I think we'll probably just be qual uh, quietly socializing with certain people. Any what kind of people? Or... Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, as Falker in Kingdom. I'm sorry? The big orc guy. Who? The big orc guy. Oh, the orc uh, guy. As Felker. Yeah. He's also hallucinating. He thinks your joke was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and, you know, says you're welcome at the Temple of Kord anytime. He would be glad to thrash you. Um... Tarvu will thank him and mention that he worships um, Alinamara. And as you say, Ola, he puts his big orc hand over your mouth and loudly says, It's unwise to mention that you worship the god of thieves. Because he's obviously had a lot of bubbling cauldron too. <laughs> and after a moment, he realizes what he just said and he starts laughing. And he grabs two more glasses and shoves one in your hand and downs another. <laughs> um, uh, Trevor would down it with him. Yay. Must be some really strong stuff. It's like LSD vodka. <laughs> hmm. They're drunk and hallucinating. Not exactly a good combination, if you ask me. Yeah. Especially <laughs> considering I had the idea that Trevor would like to show him a knife trick. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's kind of where the evening goes. As everything settles down, people start heading out their way. Turvu, our High Priest of Cord, Lord Volantru, and a couple of other, like, unimportant minor guests who are completely sloshed are like laying around on the on pillows on the floor high as Turvo goes no 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 it works like this and just like keeps fumbling his knives all over the place where the servants hey. very kindly gather them up again <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to babysit them all night aren't I and Tonatium finds himself being the sitter all night That's not a great position to be in. I've done nope. that. The worst thing is when they freak out and you have to restrain them, and then you're like, oh god. <laughs> Why is this 46 pound weakling so strong? Or you have to brush their imaginary spiders off of them? Ugh. Yeah. And the fun part is, since you're sitting next to me, you're probably also babysitting as folk. <laughs> yeah, you're, you find yourself babysitting. <laughs> all these people except lord vanderborn who has been downing these left and right and is just laughing and make a sense motive check tonatium oh wait where is my wisdom there's my wisdom oh wait do i even have that i should probably check Lord Vanderborn is stone-cold sober. He is completely bullshitting being drunk right now. Like, he, he's acting like, yeah, I have a great fortitude so I can drink and drink, but I'm drunk too. He's not. He's completely stone-cold sober. And... He notices that you notice, and for a moment you see his brow furrow slightly as he makes eye contact with you. And it's like for the first time that you've ever, since you've been meeting Lord Vanderborn, he looks like he has some serious glint in his eyes. Like he's not all jokes all the time anymore. I feel like this would give me a shiver down my back as I quickly turn my attention to Tur Turu to make sure he's not getting himself into more trouble. 
Oh, oh show us the knife trick again! Show us again! <laughs> As Tilker tries to conceal a knife in his palm. <laughs> Let's say at this point you have a minus 20 to your dexterity rolls, sure. Minus 20 my dex rolls? Let's say minus... We'll make it minus 15. Make it... Yeah. I have sleight of hand to conceal light blades. Sure! Make a sleight of hand with a minus 15. Okay, I have a plus 4 of them. <laughs> yep, I have a plus 19 to conceal light blades in my hand. And can do it while being observed. <laughs> and finally, you go, Yala! And it vanishes, and like... Everyone's like, ooh. And again, <laughs> for a moment, Tonatium, you see a serious look on uh, Lord Volantru's face. And of course, eventually they chase you out because night falls, all of that. You know, dawn is coming. And as you kind of help Turvu wander drunk home, you can uh, feel the pitter-patter of rain. <sighs> It's not, and by pitter patter, I mean the torrential downpour of rain. Uh, unintuitive, but perhaps I could use the floaty disc as an umbrella. It doesn't go up high enough. Yeah. It's been, but yeah, as you're kind of walking out through the water, it's not a drought year. This water is coming down, and it's probably been coming down like this all night and you can see the water level at crater lake rising make a knowledge local check tonatium and i'm only making you make this because it's at like three in the morning and you're exhausted and take care of a drunk guy you sure that's fine <laughs> you get home you pass out Make an intelligence roll to see if you remember what you saw last night, Tim. Okay. Uh, Tornatium, as you wake up the next morning, you stretch, you remember all the stupid things Turbu did, and then you remember seeing the rising waters of Cl Crater Lake and not seeing something not seeing the four not seeing the six people who should be set at, at equal distances around the lake holding their rods of control water oh no yeah da, 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 da. Dun, dun, dun. to be continued to be continued <laughs> Everyone gets 500 experience. Yay. <laughs> and uh, next time we start flood season proper. Flood season with sewage water. Yay! Yeah, and I can put that down <laughs> so I don't forget. Yeah, we swam on that. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. So, questions, concerns, thoughts, comments. I'm going to open up Twitch chat here. In case there's was anyone six? showed up. Was it six people or five people? Six, six or six. I think it's six. Let me double check and make sure I'm not lying to you. Okay, yeah, don't lie to us. Because I could very possibly be accidentally lying to you because of, you know, shit memory. Eight! It's supposed to be eight people. Oh, fuck. What's going on? Oh no! That water druid! That evil water druid! The rumors were true! <laughs> it might be? It might not. Yeah. Tanatian wakes up. Fucking like, somewhere through the night, Turfu woke up in, like, still drunk and high and, like, fell asleep in, in Tanatian's room. Uh, I have to think, and because we got wet, I have to like disrobe you and dry you, <laughs> so you don't catch a cold. I I'm willing to bet that Turvu passed out on the way home, and like, so Turvu wakes up first, is like hung over, making his tea in the little kitchen area. When he suddenly hears Turvu 
shout, oh fuck, or something along those lines. <laughs> Tonatium, not Turbo. Yeah. Son of a bitch! <laughs> and that's where the end of the episode is. <laughs> So, the next time image continues to be those uh, three baboons in the garden because we, you know, we'll get there eventually. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, we found the site of Balanchu. I didn't think there was. I don't know, you feel serious because of the thing. The uh, the the eight people missing. That's my guess. What's your favorite part of this party? Oh, oh, uh, drunk. oh yeah, I could just imagine like Tony and like Oh, uh, maybe Terabu did some magic trick as usual to like get rid of it, but nope. <laughs> he was like, oh no. I was concerned that I was going that I was very narrator this whole session. But it sounded like you were uh, having fun. No, this this is a nice session. <laughs> I think it was just hilarious thinking of all the implications. Like, getting high, <laughs> having a fight with Thor. <laughs> yeah. Tia, like trying to salvage it. <laughs> you did not salvage it, or you barely salvaged it. Barely, but that's like that was when I was slipping. Do you want, you want to know how many? Death. Do you want to know how many DP you left on the table? Uh, yeah. You left four fifty-four. DP on the table. 54. We could have 75. You could have added up to 75. <laughs> Which, needless to say, that, that you're like, the Lord Mayor has this massive speech about how awesome you guys are. And how the Stormblades could learn from the commoners. <laughs> that would be, and, that's a nice thought, but I, I yeah. obviously didn't expect that many D, DP. What actually happened, we did okay. Yeah. Like, we did there, okay were, there were a few, like, when I kept being like, anyone you want to talk to? And you're like, nah. Everyone yeah. you could have talked to, and you could have talked to as many people as you wanted to. <laughs> and uh, that's have what we get for being shy. And get DP. And then there were all these, and then all those competitions you failed that carried DP rewards. So basically, what like helped was that I embarrassed that one noble. Yeah, you embarrassed Todd. You embarrassed Todd. You embarrassed Zachary. Yeah, what, whoever it was, you embarrassed. And you know what the great thing was? Even if, if you hadn't done that and Turbu hadn't made his dirty joke, you'd have won anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up salvaging it by like yeah. playing off the playing off the dancing in the huge body. Mascot costume as a joke. It, it, you did well. You did well. <laughs> what would have happened if I won the uh, the singing competition against Anna? You would have gotten ten DP. Uh huh. And you. What about the dance would... contest? If I hadn't fucked it up. And I I fucked up a little on the narration. She's supposed to give you the sword that you fight with. Mm hmm. And you would have carried it on yourself. <laughs> and so instead of coming on from off stage, you would have been standing over the battleground holding your sword, singing the song, and then coming down, and you'd have been expected to dance and sing. Oh god, that would have been horrible because I still can't talk with my eyes or yeah, I still can't talk with my eyes open. Yeah. And you've just yeah, been yeah, getting the, way, the penalties. By the way, do you want me to remove curse that if possible? Well, that's possible, yeah. I have the spell. I have it prepped. You could have had that <laughs> happen do. before now, because you had like a month of downtime. Yeah. So yeah, you're cursed. You're no longer cursed. Yeah, I can talk with my eyes open. <laughs> that is such a stupid curse. I loved it. Which only really affect me if I'm doing a bardic performance that requires both singing and dancing. <laughs> Uh, if only you had blind sight, then that wouldn't have been an issue. <laughs> or like blind sense, I think it was called. All I know is that I'm ready. I am ready 
for the the, the, the drought se- or the uh, the downpour season. I'm ready for this dungeon for the dungeon, not the next one, but the one after the climax of flood season. And yeah, a certain baboons. and a certain friendly friend that you've been scared of. Yeah, a friendly friend you've been scared of. I don't really, I don't really think Terry's scared of jail. No. A friendly friend Mal is scared of. A friendly friend I am scared of? Or is it the demon guy? Antonio, I think you the... figured it out. Is it about you, the Stormblade, and or the Orphan Kid? Wow! You've all forgotten already. Yes. You've all forgotten already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the (laughs) T-Rex. The one I gave as a spoiler ages ago. The skeleton T-Rex. That hasn't happened yet. (laughs) I'm sure you'll love it. I'm sure we'll hate it. I'm sure. Well, I was thinking in the context of what characters we already knew. Yeah. Like as characters. I'm sure it'll be fine. Nah. Because I, before you posted that, I was like, thinking it'd be like, that one scene was like, you took everything I love. I don't even know who you are. Ah. <laughs> uh, I just, I'm excited. You have maybe three sessions until you're the furthest anyone's ever been in this. Let's see if you can make it past the point that has TPK'd two out of the three attempts I've run this. Oh, now you have me worried! I just thought it was like... I just thought I only went this far because it fell apart. Not because of TPK. (laughs) No, the third time... The third time they got to that point and one of the players stood up and went no and left. (laughs) So it didn't have that at all. Let's just hope all these TPK scenarios don't involve things that are immune to precision damage. They probably will. I will say that these were non-combat TPKs. Oh, they are they like trap TPKs? I won't give any more information. We drank the poison, did we? We drank the poison. <laughs> I drank it into high juice. But it was poisoned. No. No, the pie was poisoned. I, drank, I ate that too, but I didn't feel any of the poison. Anyone watching the stream will know. <laughs> Players, don't watch the stream. Shh. Shh. Jokes on you, I have the stream up. No, I'm kidding. Stream done. <laughs>